Automotive News reports proposed FTC regulations met with dealer hesitancy. Well, no kidding. <laughs> so the bad guys in the car business are hesitant to see the rules implemented. Hmm, I wonder why. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Liz, the subheading of this here article says, just over half of dealers as part of Automotive News Dealer Outlook survey think stricter regulation of dealership advertising and F&I practices. That's the nonsense that happens in dealer finance. Proposed by the FTC would have a negative impact on the industry. Negative impact on the industry <laughs> because it slams the door on dealer nonsense. Aww. But then it goes on to say that opinions are mixed on what changes they present in their day-to-day -day business. What does it tell you if more than half of dealers surveyed by Automotive News think stricter regulation of dealership advertising and dealer finance and insurance practices would have a negative impact on the industry? And furthermore, what does it say when respondents have mixed feedback on how much would change in their daily operations? Well, I for one think it says two things loud and clear. I think the first question in this survey honestly reveals what percentage of dealers are the true scoundrels, the little dirty bastards we warn consumers about. <laughs> Just over half of the dealers surveyed are severely crooked, rotten to the core, and need to be targeted by the FTC or other law enforcement and put out of business immediately. It's like saying, don't implement ethics rules on me. Don't take steps to protect consumers from people like me because it will negatively impact me. Yeah. That view lacks an ounce of remorse for bad actions, and it definitely ignores the hugely negative impact that dealers have on consumers. The mixed response and how much the rules would affect daily operations is indicative of dealers thinking to themselves, hmm, I wonder who's reading this survey response. <laughs> Got to be careful here, boys. Right. So if I say these rules would change my daily operations significantly, I'm essentially admitting that I'm one of the seriously problematic bad guys. So I'd better <laughs> say we wouldn't change much. So according to the 2023 Dealer Outlook Survey of 264 dealers and dealership managers, the survey results show roughly 54% of dealers surveyed believe the Federal Trade Commission's proposed regulations would be a net negative. About 15% believe the change would be positive. Those are the good guys, friends. They're the good guys. Yep. And 19% think it would be neither. The remaining respondents were unsure. I'd say the 19% group saying it would be neither positive or negative, and the remaining unsure respondents gave that feedback because they haven't read the regulations yet, or it's because they don't know who's reading the survey responses. This seriously ticks me off, so let me say this. While I appreciate Automotive News for doing this survey, my first question is, why did it take so long for you to publish the result of a survey you did in January? Are your data crunchers just that slow? And the follow-up question, you sat on this report for several months. Why publish it yeah, now? Why even publish it? Yeah, just a few short weeks before the June 9th deadline for the safeguard rules implementation. As the old guy in the White House likes to say, Come on, man. I also wonder, didn't the geniuses over at Automotive News ever think that this survey of dealers, asking dealers what they think about FTC rules, and then publishing their feedback as if it was actually news. Literally nobody had to be wondering if most dealers wouldn't like it. But thanks, Automotive News, for clearing up the mystery. <laughs> dealers are hesitant to have rules implemented. Wow, that really clears things up, doesn't it? <laughs> well, Kevin, to your point about the timing of the publishing of the survey, it's spot on and very suspect. Just weeks before the June 9th deadline of the Safeguards rules implementation, it is, quite frankly, a very weak and thinly disguised attempt at yet another delay in the FTC rules implementation. Automotive news, you should be hanging your heads in shame. For comparison's sake, I'm betting when the wall was being built on the southern border during the last administration that the drug cartels had hesitancy about it being done. If surveyed, most would have said it had a major <laughs> negative impact on their business. To give Automotive News a heads up when corrective actions need to be taken, don't survey the accused to see if they think the corrections are good or bad. Their feedback is worthless and certainly not newsworthy. Having said that, let's take a little further look into the data shared in this report. The problem for over half the dealers is that under the proposed regulations, products that do not provide additional benefit would be banned and dealers would be required to disclose both an offering price and a list of add-on prices to the customer, required by rule. Yet it's something they are actually already required to do by laws currently implemented. Okay, so a ban on products that provide no value? 
Right. What's funny about this is that dealers are notorious for saying, this is what most of our customers go with as yeah. they present and try to sell yet another customer, another worthless added product. Or they say that they put it on all their cars in advance like you should be expecting it. Like the notoriously worthless nitrogen-filled tires hoax that we still see showing up on contracts from all over the country. What's the matter with crooked dealers? Are they just that stupid and don't realize the cat is out of the bag? Or do they just think, well, not every consumer follows the homework guy and are wise to our insane offering, so we'll just keep peddling it? Sadly, I'm quite sure it's the last one. They believe enough people still don't know. The Automotive News article goes on to say that the following questions were presented to dealership executives January 16th through the 23rd regarding the Federal Trade Commission's proposed crackdown on what it says are deceptive or unfair practices as part of Automotive News 2023 Dealership Outlook Survey. The first question was, do you think the Federal Trade Commission's June proposal around stricter regulation of dealership advertising and finance and insurance practices will be a net positive or negative for the industry? They surveyed dealers and their managers and couldn't come up with a better question than that. And as was totally predictable, the little piggies in the business, 54% in <laughs> fact, would say it had a negative impact on them. Then came this follow-up question. How much of an effect will the FTC's proposal have on your own business practices? Such a lame question as well. There's a term known as yellow journalism. If their survey isn't an example of it, at a minimum, it's definitely yellow. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, though, some dealers actually put themselves on the record and were interviewed for the article. The thoughts of some was that the FTC rules are not necessary. And behind the scenes, the rule changes have actually been the center of a contentious debate. The FTC has repeatedly voiced a desire to increase consumer protections, while some industry leaders have expressed concern that the policies are redundant and harmful. The survey responses included this respondent who wrote the regulations are just another bureaucratic added cost, while another said the new rules would be better for the customer and Bingo. that the process needs transparency. Indeed, it does. Dean Anderson of Burien Toyota, about 10 miles south of Seattle, said many of the proposed protections already exist under state law, making the federal regulations redundant. That is true in most states, something we've been saying for over a year. The FTC rules are simply clarification of rules already on the books. Right. We're required to do substantial additional paperwork, the duplication of a lot of things you already do, Anderson said. He has a point, but there's more to it. Liz? Yes, the paperwork Anderson speaks of includes documentation of express informed consent as outlined in the proposed regulations to any product or add-ons that raise the price above the advertised offer. I love this statement because it means you, the buyers, must express your consent to be charged more for add-ons and extra fees. And who's going to consent who's besides do that? nobody? I think Anderson should have stopped right there. He added that complying with these requirements also would require training that comes at the dealer's expense. Beyond being an inconvenience, he is worried that the extra paperwork would impede their ability to make the customer's experience quick and efficient. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Is this guy living under a rock? What's quick and efficient about the sales process of car buying at a dealership? Uh, Usually, nothing. nothing. I'd have a question for our viewing audience. Would you object to a few more minutes of time as the dealer scrambles to make sure they're in FTC compliance with your deal? I don't think anybody would. No, nope, this guy just doesn't quit either. Ooh. Overall, Anderson said he believes the regulations represent an unfair, one-size-fits-all approach by the FTC. Dealers who do good business would be unnecessarily burdened, he said, for sake of managing the few egregious offenders. A few? More like 54% <laughs> as revealed by the survey. And by the way, sir, the good dealers want the rules implemented. Yes. Of course, some would say it would be just business as usual. These are the good guys. Bob Ziegler of Ziegler Chevrolet in Claysburg, Pennsylvania, about 100 miles east of Pittsburgh, believes these regulations would not change much. If that's true for his dealership, good for you, Bob. He goes on to say, fines and crackdowns on misleading practices have shown dealerships the consequences of bad business. Napleton is a good example of how untrue that is. <laughs> and then adds, as a result, most dealerships are operating with up-to-date practices. Because of this, following the new rules won't impact day-to-day -day operations. We have always had rules, and I don't think the dealers are abusing the system. Well, Mr. Ziegler, you had my approval when you first started talking, but now I'd have to say I agree with the middle three words you used in that very last quote. <laughs> I don't think anyone who believes dealers aren't abusing rules clearly isn't thinking. 
Also a quick heads up for our viewers, for those of you wanting to sign up for the early notification of our new hassle-free car buying process, a Google form has been developed to help you sign up and there's one question at the end we'd love to hear your feedback on. The final question on the form reads, with regards to the current car buying process, please tell us what you like, don't like, how you view the current car buying process, or any other things you wish to see brought to life with respect to creating the ultimate car buying process that would make you say, now this is how I want to buy a car every time. We had to do this, friends, because we we're just being inundated with thousands of responses from consumers like you wanting a heads up when we launched this all new car buying process. Tons of responses. You may get a message back from me asking you to fill out the short form so I can avoid having to do it manually myself. Thanks in advance for helping me out. The link to the form will be in our community page here on YouTube and on our website, thehomeworkguy.com. The cool thing is, is that once you complete the form, there's an option to go back and edit the information you provided or even make a second entry. All right, if you're new here to the Homework Guy channel, it's vitally important that you don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss our future announcements. Join our fast-growing group of subscribers and become a part of our YouTube family. If you're one of the newest subscribers here, we welcome you. Also, thanks to our many faithful followers for coming back and to all of our longtime subscribers out there. You guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homer Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.